tea that we offer, there's two categories of tea. There's camellia teas, and camellia teas are what we classically think of as tea, green tea, black tea, uh, white tea, oolong tea. Those are all from the same plant. And usually on Facebook, who's on Facebook? Yeah, Facebook is if you've had a bird for three seconds, you're an expert, and you tell everybody. <laughs> so I get a feel like that. I get, I get, I, like that. I get attacked by faceless communication all the time, saying, "I can't believe you're giving birds tea. It's full of caffeine. You're going to kill the birds, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And I said, "Okay, first of all, there's only teas from this one plant naturally have caffeine, and if you get it." De we'll talk about decaffeination in a minute, but that, as long as it's decaffeinated, those are completely safe. The literal hundreds of other types of teas that are available are herbal teas, and none of them have caffeine. So this caffeine myth that everything has caffeine, all tea has caffeine, is, is, a, is just that a myth. So I'm going to talk about these real quick, and then we'll focus mostly on herbals. Now, camellia teas are, a, it's a small shrub grown in Asia, um, and the different types of tea is when they pluck the uh, leaf, and when they, uh, how they process it. Huh? So green tea is called green because they pick it when it's fresh leaf, it's still green. Black is completely oxidized, so it goes dark, like a tree that falls off, the leaf that falls off of a tree. Um, white tea is picked before the leaf buds even open, and then when they're drying it, they unroll into like a needle, and that makes white tea a real potent uh, form of, of source of antioxidants, which I'll talk about in a second. And then Oolong we don't use, um, it's, it's not um, a hugely readily available in large quantities, um, but they allow that to interact with oils. So depending on when the tea is plucked, that's what gives it its uh, color and flavor, okay? So green tea, does anybody drink green tea? You, everybody needs to be drinking green tea. I drink 20 cups of green tea every day in some form. Um, it's it's honed in antioxidants. And um, what antioxidants are, in a very simplified definition, is to clean up the mess that's in your cells, because when that mess lingers, it causes problems, like cancers and inflammation and stuff like that. It's 30, 20 to 30 times more potent than vitamin E, and it has vitamin C, so it, it helps uh, support the immune system. It actually reverses cholesterol. Um, I reverse cholesterol between this and coconut oil. Um, by 40 points in six months, <coughs> so it makes a big difference. Wow. Reduces blood pressure and then it has nutrition. So it's a green leaf, so it's going to have B vitamins and some carotenes as well. And I had a lineated parakeet that had gotten into an injured, uh, gotten into a bird, a uh, fight with another bird and injured its, uh, injured its thigh. And it had a gash that was significant. She cleaned it up, we used this stuff for three days. You could almost not even see the gash anymore. It was that it just healed it that quickly. So I started using calendula on my face every single day um, as aftershave and stuff like that. This stuff's a miracle. It really, it really is uh, amazing. Um, it also, if you drink it, it helps with stomach upset and ulcers because any open wound it will heal. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, so we actually spray it on birds that are plucking as well, um, mm -hmm. right on their skin. Uh, the Journal of Clinical Oncology uh, used it on women uh, that were going through radiation for breast cancer treatment, and they found that it reduced their pain significantly. Um, and that's because of uh, the penicyc penicycline triterpene trihydroxy alcohols, PTTs. Um, the phytochemistry evaluated those a long time ago, in 1985, um, so we've known about this for some time. It also, uh, the active ingredient is colonialin, that's, that's presumably what is uh, causing the healing. Red clover is good, um, uh, anti-inflammatory as well, it reduces respiratory irritation, so it's a good blood tonic, um, it's good for skin and feather issues. Um, we mix red clover with uh, calendula and chamomile in our calming skin and feather, and we've used that for pluckers now for a long time. Um, we mix it, there we go. Thank you, Vanna. Um, and then we, we, uh, we have them drink it, we brew it, we have them drink it, and we spray it directly on the bird. And we've had people that have uh, had some real turnarounds with their birds as far as plucking. Um, Within a week, I've seen pin feathers coming back. Yeah, I mean, it, it can happen pretty quickly, especially if it's a bird that's plucking out of anxiety, because once that chamomile starts acting, that bird, I mean, it, it's significant. You, it, you see the difference in the bird pretty quickly. Um, uh, it also helps with bone density and tissue integrity. Red clover is um, a good source of minerals. 
So roses and rose hips, high in vitamin C, high in bioflavonoids, that pungent uh, color is going to be something that um, signals how significant it is when it comes to uh, those bioflavonoids. Um, blueberries are high in bioflavonoids because they're pigments as well. It's a blood liver and kidney tonic, it's a cleanser. Um, it is uh, used for fatigue, recovery from illness. In 94, the National Cancer Institute looked at rose tea um, and found that it, recru it uh, reduced esophageal cancer by 60%. And Purdue looked at it and found that it inhibits the growth of cancer cells in the lab too. So obviously it, it has some pretty wide benefits. Um, rose, roses, uh, we do ro red rose petals. Uh, rose hips. We give all of these things um, to a lot of different animals. Our birds love it. If you've ever had rose hip tea, it's very fruity. It's got a really great flavor. If you're not a big tea fan, like you don't like green tea or black tea, this is something that you can mix with that to make it make the flavor better. Um, we give roses and rose hips to chinchillas dry. We call these chinchilla crack. They'll do anything for a rose hip. Um, and we give petals to um, our birds, our reptiles, everybody, um, including the lemurs. Um, because this is such a cleanser, though, you are going to have to use the restroom, all right, because it, is, it flushes your system. I don't drink this after 8 o'clock in the morning because I teach at 8.45. <laughs> and I'll be dancing around in front of those kids. So um, we, this is, uh, some of you have probably heard of I-5, the flamingo that hatched on I-5 in California. Um, she all over Facebook, but um, loves rose tea. Uh, she gives it rose tea all the time. We've also started giving it to our geckos. These are crested geckos, and we mix it in with this, uh, they, they eat a, a fruit powder um, that we mix with water. They're, um, they don't eat bugs or anything like that. They just eat this stuff. And we've been using um, the tea as the base. And this is the first baby. As soon as we started offering tea, they started laying eggs all over the place. And now um, this is the first baby, and then these are some sub subsequent babies from that. Uh, peppermint is good for GI upset. That's why they have the peppermints at the end of the counter at the restaurants. They're probably covered in E. coli, though, so you probably shouldn't be touching those. Uh, but antiseptic and antiviral properties. <laughs> Uh, peppermint oil, you probably noticed, is uh, prevalent in some cleaning products now. Um, but the USDA Human Nutrition, Nutrition Research Center looked at peppermint tea, and they found that it's antibacterial, it's antiviral, um, it has strong antioxidant properties, um, it also is anti-cancer, and is great for an, uh, an anti-allergenic, um, specifically uh, seasonal allergies. Um, and we put this into our rest bait, and we have birds, um, we have some people, I've got two clients with Amazons for some reason, outdoors, and their birds are allergic to grass pollen. And they, their you know, face flares up and everything. Um, as soon as they put them on the rest bait tea, they haven't had any reoccurrence. One of them ran out, bam, allergies came right back after they ran out. So. Now she frantically calls and she's like, I need more of that tea, I need more of that tea. So um, we know that peppermint does reduce a seasonal allergies especially. Um, it relaxes the GI tract because it um, is accommodative on the nervous system as well. Um, and it has a lot of very beneficial compounds. Menthol is what gives it its uh, odor. Okay, aniseed it helps with digestion. What does the anise smell like? Licorice. Licorice. Now I, I'm a biologist and I tend to look at what the data tells me. And the data tells me that our birds have very small olfactory bulbs in their brain, which means they don't have a significant smell, sense of smell. But my, birds can tell when you're brewing this. So I think that birds are very selective in what they can smell. And I, this is, I think this is one case where, because um, I'm telling you, I, my, you can tell, birds know when you're brewing this, they just know. Um, so it, it's good for digestion, it's, um, it good, it's good for cough and bronchitis. Um, it's, shikimic acid is the active ingredient that they use in Tamiflu. And Tamiflu gets its ingredient from aniseed. But the kicker is it's not the seed, it's actually in the pod, so you have to brew the whole pod. And what I love about this is now you have an enrichment tool for your bird, because birds love to destroy aniseed pods. They're fun. They, they have to manipulate them in many different ways. They really, really like them. So once you brew it, you, just, you can just leave it in there. 
Um, it's good for stomach issues. Um, they're antifungal and antimicrobial as well. We do use this in our hand feeding formula. It's part of, um, um, it was part of our chick tea. I don't know if it's, if it's there. Um, but anything to stave off candida. Candida yeast is such an issue with so many birds. Um, it has flavonoid glycosides, which are antioxidants. Those actually are the active um, compound that are re um, reducing the inflammation and irritation in the nervous system. Um, it's got other things like quercetin and things like that that have been researched as far as heart disease go. Um, it's a seed, so you're going to have some really good healthy fats and proteins in there. You'll get a little bit of an oil slick across the tea, which is good. <clears throat> raspberry leaf, if you have a female bird at home, you should have raspberry leaf on hand all the time. Um, if you have a hormonal male bird, you should also have this on hand all the time. Um, it's considered a female tonic because it helps um, tone the uterus, it helps pass eggs safely, and it helps replace used calcium when birds have laid eggs. Um, how we found out about this was um, Berlinzu in Germany was using this on animals that were born with large heads, like uh, uh, Barbarossa, Red River hogs, and um, other, <coughs> other, uh, other large hogs, warthogs, things like that. And they said it helps birth with just about anything. The more research you do, you realize that women all over the world drink this when they're during labor to help with labor, except in the U.S. because we don't like to do anything interesting here, right? Anything natural is bad. So the alkaloid free green is what um, actually stimulates these muscle contractions. And it's not just the uterus, it also helps stimulate muscle, muscular contractions through the digestive system and get stuff moving through, so it's good for constipation as well. Um, it has lots of vitamins and minerals, cal vitamin C and calcium as well. Um, but what we've done um, with male Amazons, I get calls in the spring, and I have people say, my bird got mean all of a sudden. They're like, let me guess, it's an Amazon. Yeah, how'd you know? And let me guess, it has the word yellow in its name. Yep. And it's a male. Oh my God, you're a genius. <laughs> no, they're just all like this. You know, they're just all like this. Yeah. So um, raspberry leaf is great because it balances hormones. It stimulates, um, it, it enhances fertility without hormone surges, but it really helps balance. And with uh, females, you know, I've used, I've had Goulian finches, which are notorious for becoming egg bound. Um, you give them this, they'll pass the egg safely within hours. It's just that fast. Um, so I was at San Francisco Zoo doing this talk um, year before last, and um, I did it for their keeper staff. And the curator of mammals comes up and says, you know, we have this gorilla, and she's had reproductive problems. I want to try that reproductive tea you were talking about that has raspberry leaf in it. So we gave her some, and uh, the next morning she gave her a nice big cup of raspberry leaf tea. And I got this text message at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Here's the umbilical cord, and here's the baby uh -huh. right here. And she's like, wow, this stuff really works. And I'm like, well, I mean, I didn't make it up. Yeah, we know it works. Um, but so from that point on, they've been keeping this stuff on hand for animals that have had issues, including um, birds that um, they potentially want to, to lay eggs. Uh, red tea. <coughs> red tea is mineral rich. It's grown um, high in uh, the mountains of South Africa, upper elevations. Um, it helps with, it's a, it's a calmative. It helps with colic and indigestion. Um, it's rich in flavonoids which are those antioxidants that um, usually have some kind of uh, anti-inflammatory action. Um, it's also good for allergies. Um, it's anti-mutagenic, so it also helps keep your DNA from mutating, which can lead to cancers. Uh, antiviral properties as well. Lavender, I'm sure you've all smelled lavender before. Lavender is very popular. Um, sometimes the odor is enough uh, for calming, but it helps ease insomnia. Uh, it helps with respiratory issues. It's a kidney tonic as well. Um, it has cormorines in particular, which are blood thinners that um, helps uh, it helps speed things through and uh, cleanse the blood. And sometimes the aroma is enough. We've been using handfuls of uh, lavender now in shipping crates, in nest boxes, in chicken coops, any place where we need birds to calm down. Sometimes we just throw it in the bottom of their cage to help, you know, deodorize the cage. Uh, things along those lines. Um, 
if you make toys for your bird, one of my uh, friends that has Macaw's favorite things, she stuffs paper bags every morning with everything she can find. She just throws the bag in with the birds and they just destroy it. She throws a handful of tea in there, all kinds of different flowers and stuff like that, anything to keep them busy. And lavender is one of those. Uh, I keep a little bag of lavender in my glove box in my car uh, because it's good for um, yeah, it uh, motion sickness. Um, I just hope the cops never search my car. <laughs> I'm going to have some explaining to do. Put <laughs> <laughs> a baggy full of cat in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, dandelion leaf is uh, great for liver and gallbladder health. Um, birds outside of cockatoos don't have gallbladders, but it still supports the liver. Kidney tonic is uh, quick removal of toxins, so it's going to help flush the body of toxins. Um, it helps with digestion, and it's a leafy green. It's got calcium, so it's going to help support joints and skin. Um, elasticity, um, circulatory system, things like that. High carotenoids, lots of vitamins, lots of minerals. Jasmine tea, we use dragon pearls, they're those little round flowers. I've actually seen birds eat these flowers like they were a, a seed, um, crack them open and, and uh, eat them that way. Uh, but jasmine is, uh, contains jasmineate, and that's a well researched anti cancer compound. Fundamental Clinical Pharmacology looked at uh, jasmine um, and its effects against cancer in 2005. The Journal of Applied Physiology says it's a uh, nerve um, relaxant and it's a mood enhancer. Um, it helps decrease heart disease and stroke because of its action on the circulatory system. It's antibacterial and antiviral, but this is my favorite part. It reduces fat and cholesterol absorption. So, um, what I dropped 85 pounds in 10 months, and um, it was uh, green and jasmine tea and coconut oil. That just bur it just burns the fat right off your body. Um, I ain't touching that. Pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff. Uh, coriander is um, good for digestion. It's an appetite stimulant as well. Um, I have found that when I have stubborn birds that don't want to eat a lot of a lot of stuff that I want them to eat, my my black palm was like this. She just I don't know if she ate for months because everything looked untouched, but you probably have birds where they'll like pick one thing out and you can't tell if it's gone or not. So she drove me nuts. I was like, I think she's starving, but her weight's okay. But you know, I mean, um, when I started offering coriander, that seemed to turn things around and she empties your bowl now. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, that will continue. Um, it's anti-inflammatory. It's got volatile oils because it is a seed. And uh, when you brew it, once again, you'll get that oil slick across the top. And it's got a really pungent odor, which birds seem to like. Um, and fennel is the same. It's also digestive aid. Um, you brew the seed itself. It's uh, high in all those fatty acids, protein, sugars, vitamins, all kinds of different things. And anatole is the uh, compound that gives it its uh, odor as well. And it, it, it uh, is an anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer agent. And then milk thistle is one of the biggest things that vets have for his uh, liver health. Um, many of them don't want to call it milk thistle because it sounds too natural. So they, <laughs> it's a component in CME, I think, is the uh, ingredient. It's an ingredient in that. Um, but they, they do rec readily recognize that it, uh, you, that it not only protects the liver, but it also regenerates liver tissue. And there's not much that can regenerate liver tissue. So we started offering this to our toucans just for liver support because we know that their livers will be compromised in some way. Um, kidney and bladder cleanser as well. And psilomarin is the active ingredient that's been researching uh, milk thistle that does support the liver. And then the last one is Tulsi. And we added Tulsi, we started adding Tulsi into, um, after the research, uh, along with Dr. Karen Becker uh, last year. And Tulsi, it's called holy basil. It's the number two export out of India. And it's known as an adaptogen. It's adaptogenic compounds are things that help your nervous system cope with the stress of change. And most of you probably have a bird like African Grays where you put a new toy in their cage and they're like this for three weeks. Um, this helps those transitions, okay? And um, it's really good stuff because stress is a part of life. All animals have to be exposed to stress so they know how to cope. I think that's why we have a whole generation that can't cope right now. 
uh, because we've taken all their stress. We, tr we try to take all their stress away, um, but we we do need to make sure that our birds can cope with stress, and this helps. There, it's also immunomodulator. It balances the immune system because an overactive immune system is just as dangerous as an underactive immune system. So it helps balance the immune system as well. Um, it strengthens the digestive system as, and because it promotes a healthy metabolism. So this is one that they're uh, touting uh, for weight loss as well. Okay, um, so this journal looked at um, the anti-stress, uh, what made it an uh, anti-stress tea, what, what in it, what was the compound, and they found that the antioxidants that are in the tea are actually what caused the anti-stress action in the tea. And then uh, it has a lot of active components, um, including carvacrol, and that's interesting because carvacrol is what makes oregano an antifungal. So um, we use uh, we use this as well in chick formula, just to keep any kind of fungus out of the crop and keep keep the birds from uh, you know any kind of candida infections. So um, never use boiling water for tea. That's a big mistake that people make. Um, it should be hot water, but never boiling. The magic, the magic numbers right now are 165 to 185. That seems to be what the happy medium is right now for that. Um, let the tea cool before you give it to your bird. Um, no tea bags or strainers in the cage, otherwise you're going to have a mess on your hands. Um, if the animal's suspicious, you steep it for a shorter period of time. You start making it, you know, more dilute um, because all of our birds are like. <laughs> you know, what are you doing to me? Um, substitute tea for water whenever you cook. So what I normally do is um, every six to eight weeks I make a huge batch and freeze um, beans, pasta, rice. Um, got any? I kitchen sink it so everything I have access to, chopped vegetables, whatever. When I make beans and pasta and rice, after I'm done boiling it and I turn the heat off and I let it sit and soak for a while. I dump the tea right in and I just mix it. So the tea's steeping in there and everything here is absorbing the tea. So when and they're eating the water. rice, rice is not nutrition. I mean, it doesn't really have any nutrition. Mm -hmm. So if I can get the rice to be layered with nutrition, why not? Mm -hmm. So that's, and pasta's the same way. Pasta's fun to eat, but we know it's not good for us. It's not good for our birds. So if we can layer the nutrition, get, get it infused with tea, um, even better. Um, we also can use some of them topically. If the tea brews and it's red, don't spray it on your bird or you're going to have a red bird. Right? <laughs> That's the way it is. Um, but anything with any of the yellow teas, um, calendula, chamomile, things like that, you can spray that on your birds. Unless you're a scammer, then you could spray it and call it a red factor. <laughs> um, <laughs> Never completely replace water with tea. Um, we leave tea out as long as we leave our fresh food out. So in the morning I give all my birds fresh food and tea. In the evening when I pull all their fresh food, I pull the tea and I give them fresh water. That way they have water part of the day. Okay. Um, many herbal teas can be fed dry as well. Anything up there, any of those teas can be fed just like they are. You get more nutritional benefit if you brew it. Brewing is going to release compounds that aren't normally readily available. And some of those things are hard to digest. So uh, brewing helps release those more readily and gets the birds drinking them. Um, but we, we offer these, um, I waste nothing. Whatever I brew, I keep the wet stuff that I brewed and I mix it in with their wet food. All the flowers and stuff, it sticks to their fruit, sticks to their pastas and rices and all that good stuff, um, it sticks to everything. So I don't waste anything, I roll it all in.